This is Countdown to Economic Collapse, November 13th, 2011. I'm David John Sponheim for America's Third Party, running for president in 2012. I want to announce that the stock market has reached, again, beyond 12,000, went up 259 points on Friday. And this is on news of controversy in Italy. Silvio Berlusconi is going to retire, and there's talk that he might even run for prime minister. But in the meantime, Italy will have perhaps Mario Monti, the former EU commissioner, to run the nation as it grapples with cutting the budget. Now, many, many countries across the globe are dealing with budget cuts as the primary problem. And this, in and of itself, is a huge a conflict between politics and economics. Politics means politicians who get reelected, who get money from moneyed interests. And that tends to be uh, the reason they can't cut the budget, because they, they're tied to all these companies that are milking off of the government budgets. Now, this problem is very clear in America as well. And what's happening in Greece and Italy will eventually happen in America. And what we need is a person at the helm of this nation leading this nation toward budget cuts in all different directions so that the two parties no longer can sit back with their cronies and make very little cuts and constantly favor the people that are sucking off of the government teat. Now, I've talked a lot about this. It's the critical problem with our budget. It's the reason why we were downgraded from triple A status, standard and poor's to double A status. This is a, a classic example. They wanted us to cut $4 trillion from our budget. And they, they absolutely said we had to do that in order to keep our AAA status. Well, you saw what Obama did next to nothing. And they blamed the Republicans that they didn't cut enough. Well, both parties need to cut a tremendous amount. We also have to forge ties with corporations that can help improve our nation's economy. One of those corporations, ironically, is the company that we should get more taxes from. ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil doesn't pay any taxes at all. And we were talking about a fair flat tax that would definitely tax companies, corporations, at 10%, and they would pay their fair share. Now, ExxonMobil is currently talking with the Kurds. The Kurdish government is thinking about working an ExxonMobil pipeline solution out of Kurdistan. This is a, a clear example of what we could possibly do. In the Iraq situation has been mishandled by Barack Obama in that he could have easily modernized the oil wells north of Baghdad and we could have left a contingency of 10,000 troops in and around that area to maintain that pipeline and we could easily have gotten revenue from the oil in Iraq. Yet Obama has done nothing. Instead he wants to win re-election by announcing he's going to pull all the troops home. And that's just on news that a governor in one of the provinces, a Sunni governor, was nearly assassinated last week. And the idea that the Sunnis may separate from the Shiites is very real. And a civil war in Iraq could ensue with no presence from the U.S. military. So I believe Barack Obama is making yet another bad decision regarding our position in Iraq. And I do want to get our troops home. I want to bring home troops out of Afghanistan as well. And I have a strategy to, to protect the populated region of all of those areas. For instance, Kandahar or Kabul can all have protective safe zones around them so that they could ensure safety and safe haven for people fleeing from insurgent violence. This is an idea that would not require a tremendous amount of men on the ground to maintain. Automated systems could be put in place and the people of these areas that we are heavily invested in will have safety and security well into the future. Now, at home front, we have to start building jobs, and Barack Obama has not done that. In fact, it seems like all the corporations in America are sitting back waiting for what's going to happen in the 2012 election, because if Barack Obama gets reelected, they'll feel like the government is like a wet blanket over job creation and business growth. They'll feel that our nation is slipping into this doldrum that seems to be everywhere now. People are spending less. Our economy is still booming in some ways, because the retail sector continues to make sales. So we have to always realize that our dollar is strong, and it's one of the strongest currencies in the world, and as the world reserve currency, our dollar can very well maintain the pace of global economic recovery. 
Now, a lot of people are waiting for the budgets to be slashed, pension funds to be slashed in countries like Greece and Italy. But here, too, we have to start planning that. Cities around the country are going bankrupt as a result of bad municipal bonds and too much pension outlays. So we have to actually start thinking of shoring up our budget and getting the cuts necessary. I mean a trillion dollars off our annual budget. Let's get a zero deficit for 2013, shall we? That alone will send a message to the world. And a new third party president will essentially show the world that we have changed our colors. We are going to be more peaceful and less of an aggressor around the world. That we will start taking care of our own problems first and foremost, protect our border, secure the, the southern border with a thousand mile fence, and maintain a slow immigration policy that will be fast-tracked for people who want to pay a thousand dollars to apply for U.S. citizenship. And we'll give them an education, a six-month student visa, and as long as they don't have a criminal record, they can become a U.S. citizen if they're currently living in this country. That's a, a compromise so that we don't just give them amnesty, but we will make sure that they have a home and a future and our nation will grow because there are a lot of people that are willing to work hard to make this nation greater. One of the unique features of America's Third Party is we are looking for immediate solutions to the economic hardship Americans are facing. And we've got a plan called the Micro Loan Program where you can get up to $1,000 from the government and pay it back in six months with $40 interest. And if you don't choose to do that and decide to keep the money, you would no longer get a loan from the government and the government would know the people that are not good for their word and the government would know who is getting a return on their profit and can actually get more money. So if we were to give every American citizen over the age of 18 a thousand dollars, it would cost roughly 250 billion dollars. And some people are saying, oh, that's too much. You know, we didn't get any of that $700 billion in TARP money that went to the big banks. The American people got nothing. And the ARRA, American Recovery Reinvestment Act, $787 billion, none of it really went to average Americans. So don't tell me that the American people don't deserve $1,000 apiece. At $250 billion, it's an investment in the future. And other countries have done this. Australia did this in 2008, $995 per person. And it really helped their economy. This program will work, and I think that'll be the best thing our economy can do at the very beginning of my presidency. Isn't it interesting how Barack Obama is now blaming the Secretary of Energy for the potential disaster with Solyndra? Isn't it interesting how he's now pointing the finger as opposed to taking responsibility for receiving all that money from Solyndra and not actually getting accountability and getting Solyndra to produce solar panels that could be effective and low cost? Isn't it Barack Obama's fault that our nation is not restricting corporate profits and Wall Street greed? Isn't it his fault for not firing anyone on the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission? Let's start looking at the real problem, folks. A president that can only lie to the American people and he can't lead. He can only pretend to want to do something and can never deliver on his promises. We have to start asking ourselves, do we have another four more years? Can we afford another four more years of a lame duck president like Barack Obama? Now, our future really relies on you at this point. If we don't vote for a third party, our nation will slip into the two-party stalemate where they can't cut the budget. If we don't vote for a president who can lead and who has an assertive capability, we will be eventually put in the category of being a nation that has no leadership. And we will eventually lose everything that we fought hard for. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to make you realize now is the time for a third party. Now is the time for a new leader, a person who can show the world that our nation can lead by example in innovations, in green, clean technologies, and in our own domestic oil production, which is central to the long-term survival of this nation. So I urge you all to look at the future and join us in our weekly chat show every weekday night, 6 to 8, on Blog TV. I'm David John Sponheim, and I support this message. Check us out at americasthirdparty.com. ATP, you and me.